everybody, we are live on the other website, www.ifco.tv. Uh, Jean Keller, hello, Bobby oh, Tarantino. Yep, yeah, he's yeah. got a lot of us on. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to end here. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Yep, yep. Nice to see you. Hello, goodbye. And we are already live on the, the big screen now. The big yeah. screen. Oh, now we're on the big All screen. The hey, ACO.tv. Yeah. All right, good, good. Excellent. Awesome. So uh, so we are still live, but we are going to begin the show. Okay. All right, uh, so. Facebook, folks. Wow. Ooh, <laughs> it's like stereo sound here. Hold on, you guys. Yeah, click finish there. Multiple technologies going yeah, on. Yeah, see? We can oh, broadcast wow. the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Everybody all set? Yeah, We're set. let's rock on. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is uh, IFCO.TV, live from TLC Seminar in the People's Republic of New Jersey, <laughs> Princeton. <laughs> yes, and we're here with some very special guests. I thought uh, so Governor Christie over there. Yeah, no, absolutely. No. <laughs> uh, to my far right is the one and the only Dr. Daniel Knowles. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. The genius behind Mile High and Thank the Sherman you. Connect calls. Mm -hmm. uh, so Boy, he's going to introduce our special guest of honor. Oh, well, yes, I am. I like that. Yes, I am. And uh, first of all, I am very grateful to be hosting IFCO TV for the first time. Uh -huh. And even though I was the first ever guest, I've never hosted. Uh -huh. So as I said, I want to make sure that you have that Emmy Award available for okay. best host ever. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Right, you got We're that. Call it a Reggie. Oh, yeah. call it a Reggie. There you go. That's perfect. Just don't call it a Shubal. Yeah. Right? Oh. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. there for him. Yeah. There we go. Um, He's watching. <laughs> watching yes. okay good good um, so and I'm very grateful to be here uh, attending the TLC event that is put on by Jen and Dean DePice thank you for joining us thank on you. IFCO TV I've known dr. Dean for a number of years and dr. Jen and I'm really grateful to be here with them thank you for joining us on IFCO TV you're welcome good to be here honor. yeah so should I explain the obvious well, well, before we get into <laughs> TLC, I, I, I'd like you to share a little bit like a uh, prehistory uh, before, I guess, TLC started. How did you get into chiropractic or how did you uh, get together and, and get I'd love involved to hear in the you chiropractic? Start that one. I normally okay, start yeah. that conversation. Either one can oh, take yeah. that one. I would oh, love to hear awesome. you start that conversation. All right. Awesome. Well, I started in chiropractic because my mom got in a car accident and she told me that I should go to a chiropractor. And I didn't know what it was. I grew up right on Long Island, right near New York Chiropractic when it was on Long Island. And I went to see this chiropractor and I was totally open because I didn't know what it was. I was going to go to physical therapy school. And she told me right from the beginning, you can do what you thought you were wanted to do in physical therapy, plus mm -hmm. see the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. Treat people right from the beginning and help them to change their paradigm of understanding of health and wellness. So it was very attractive to me. I went right to um, chiropractic school from there, switched from my major, went right to chiropractic school, and then I met Dean. Aww. Aww. Sweet. I, uh, I've been getting adjusted since I was a few months old. Um, I've been very immersed in classical music, went to Manus Music Conservatory in Manhattan, and a lot of things happened about me wanting to understand more about my life than strictly music since I was everything music. Um, everything. I mean, all through high school, everything was about being a classical musician. College was a classical musician. And the minute I, I drew myself even remotely away from that, um, I wanted to leap to my next decision. I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to take a, a, at least a semester off and not make a decision. And my chiropractor, Dr. Sabia, made a point of meeting with me. Uh, a relative of ours, Dr. Ralph Aloy, a medical doctor from Secaucus, he made a point of meeting with me. And immediately, family relatives wanted me to get involved in healthcare. And uh, Dr. Mike pulled me aside one night and he made me wait in his office till he was done adjusting everybody. And he sat and he just drilled his love of chiropractic into an evening of conversation mm. with him. And mm. I, it, it was evident to me it meant so much to him to support that conversation in my heart. Mm. And, and I paused and for the next six months I wrestled with a lot of things, but what he did to sit down with me to talk about chiropractic, I believe really shifted everything. Mm. So I ended up um, 
changing my majors. I did a double major uh, with a minor in nutrition, major in biology and chemistry, and I went to, to chiropractic school and met you. And mm -hmm. yep. uh, Where did you go to chiropractic school? I don't remember. At Life. At Life, At Life. okay. Yep. And you went to NYCC or? No, no, I no, went to Life. You went to Life. Yeah. And you were in Long Island. Where in Long Island were you? Hicksville. Okay, Hicksville. Right next to Glen Cove. Well, because yeah. my, my mom went to chiropractic school at NYCC, uh, and right. my dad's office was in Long Island, so oh, really? I figured it out. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just, yeah. So now tell us a little bit about TLC mm -hmm. and what TLC is all about. Well, I mean, it was five, six, seven, eight years in practice. That period, Jen and I were having an amazing time, I think I would say. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're married. We obliterated student loan debts. We accumulated a life of our dreams. We had three kids. She delivered them at home, the last one underwater. Mm -hmm. We were living a chiropractic life. None of our kids were vaccinated. We homeschooled them. And everything chiropractic was glorious. And every time we would like visit a state meeting or we'd read a magazine or a, TL or a chiropractic newspaper, so often we'd get depressed about chiropractic talking to chiropractors. But when we lived, chiro <laughs> but, but when we lived chiropractic with our patients, we were in heaven. So it's like practice was heaven and chiropractors were dark. And I was like, what's that about? I don't want to go, I don't want to go near anyone. So we just grew the living daylights out of our practice mm -hmm. life. And it was about eight, nine years in practice. Like we went to a CE program. I, I said, this is terrible. I don't ever want to go to a CE program again. And everything that made us leave our practice and go into chiropractic always brought up stuff. I mean, if it was a happy group to be with, then in the back corners, they were talking about who hates each other. If it was a positive group to be, I mean, if it was a negative group to be with, then the whole thing was negative. I was just like, stop it, mm -hmm. stop it. Mm. So it was neat because we had been to the Institutes for the Achievement of Human Potential. We were doing a lot of work with brain injured uh, recovery work. We ended up with a brain injured child early on. And so that attracted things. A lot of chiropractors used to, used to come and stay with us and visit our practice and live with us for a week or two. And everywhere we went, we started contributing to what we were receiving in the midst of receiving. Mm. And it became evident that people were drawn to our nature of interaction. Mm -hmm. So they'd go to management companies or seminars and they'd learn stuff. Mm -hmm. But when they'd play with us, they'd interact, they'd interact in a way that opened their hearts. Mm -hmm. And it became evident that God gave us a gift in addition to great lives in practice to a great facilitation mm -hmm. of chiropractors. Mm -hmm. And how do you describe that transition? Well, I love how you pointed that out. You know, people aren't hungry for more information. Mm -hmm. They have a plethora of information everywhere. But people are starving for more relationships. And just like your chiropractic story, you know, it was about Dr. Sabia investing in you. Right. And then you realized within you that that was your calling. And so that's what we do. We create a community where people can get information, yes, and they can apply it and they can make it personal to them and they can come to life from their heart, from inside out. So we're really mm -hmm. living chiropractic yeah. in a practice, in a community that is you know, it really transcends chiropractic. It transcends the physical adjustment, and it really unites the the man physical and man spiritual. And that's what we do in Reach One Teach One. Well, wow. well, Frank, you've been all over the profession, right. so you sat in that first hour. That was clearly was not just, an information. That was going through my mind as you guys were speaking. Uh, so that that was an awesome session. Uh, so everybody was. Um, excited you got everybody involved mm -hmm. uh, I went to a lot of uh, seminars and it, it, it's very plain and boring and, and, and there's not any excitement either mm -hmm. but you also delivered some valuable information too so I was sitting here thinking about uh, Who's your ideal client? Who, if somebody's at home right now watching, who you think should be here, uh, but might be on on the verge of saying, "Okay, should I go to someone, or should I keep on doing what I'm always mm. been doing?" Mm. What would that person look like who should be here? Mm -hmm. Great question. Why don't you go there, Jen? Mm. Well, who should be here is if there's anything that of what we say and what you experience that stirs something in you, even if it's something you're a little uncomfortable with then our, our challenge to you is respond to that mm. and investigate it and discover what it is because it'll promote you to the next step. You know, we're, we want to be moving chiropractors and chiropractic forward and everything we do should provoke that next thing. And if mm. you're happy doing with what you're doing mm -hmm. and getting the same results, then that's great. There's no A and D. In TLC, we talk all about the end. Mm. Whatever you're doing and if you want a little more, then increase the quality of the conversations and the people that are stimulating that around you. And if you're content where you are, then awesome. Just stay there and do what you're doing. But 
the ideal person for us is somebody who's really excited to move forward. They may not know how to do that, but they want to be in a community. They don't mm -hmm. want to be isolated. They don't want to sit alone and kind of go over the same thing over and over. They want for something more. And I think most people really want for something more in some area mm -hmm. of their life. And that's what chiropractic has to offer. The unending benefits of chiropractic is the same thing that we see in TLC. Mm -hmm. This unending benefits if you're digging in deep to what's important to you and digging into your heart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and one of the things that I noticed, I really like how you said that about relationships, is I go to a lot of chiropractic events, as I know you do, mm -hmm. and uh, tell me if you find this to be mm -hmm. true. I love getting great content at a program, which I know, for example, whenever I've heard you speak, that's the case, and I know that's going to be the case during this weekend. But one of the things I find most valuable is actually the conversations that happen in the hallways mm -hmm. yeah. and in the restaurant, mm -hmm. sure. and that actually is just as valuable for the event as the speaker is sure. presenting. Yeah. 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 Well, what's interesting is something, Jen, so in the founding of TLC, I push that we needed to do this. Mm. And it was at least several years lag time till Jen showed up full force in the movement. And one of the Jen's gifts that she brought is she is all about facilitation and what Danny's talking about that um, it isn't the learning of the information in the classroom sometimes that's the most critical part of a weekend, but it's the interaction with others regarding it that breaks us through the most. And what Jen has is an extraordinary skill. I mean, I ask other doctors, leaders of the profession, there are very few chiropractors who do what she does. Most are scared to do it mm -hmm. because it's very vulnerable on stage to do what she does. Mm -hmm. She facilitates an entire audience of hundreds of people into very, very articulated interaction. Mm -hmm. So she had hundreds of, we had 300 people in that room mm -hmm. and she had the whole room engaged in interaction. Absolutely. And nothing got out of control. Nobody was off on their tangents. No egos grabbed the microphone. It mm -hmm. was completely facilitatory in the direction of where we had to go. So she brings, this is one of her gifts. Mm -hmm. So the TLC community is about, I guess if, you, if I answered the question about who does it serve, well, it serves anybody, whether you take x-rays, don't take x-rays, you treat versus care for, you, you know, whatever your differences are, we try not to create those divides. We mm -hmm. labor to enhance your expression of your best version of self, mm -hmm. even in the classrooms facilitation is key. It's the Ben Franklin quote. Teach me and I'll forget. Explain it to me, engage me in it, I might remember. But if I interact with the information, I'll remember it forever. Jen brings something to TLC and has drawn out of all the 30 or so of us as coaches that we're here to facilitate your heart. And it's your heart that's more important than your methods. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. like that. You know, uh, I. First of all, th thank you so much for having us out here too. I I'm so glad it got all put in. together. And on many levels, mm -hmm. uh, last weekend uh, I was supposed to be at New Zealand Chiropractic College, which we have really? a person from New Zealand oh. watching the show, wow. Miranda. And uh, she, she actually hosted the show with Liam Schubel last weekend. Uh, uh, I didn't go to that week, uh, that, that event, so I got to stay here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking as one door closed, another one opened up uh, and I had to, I got a trip to California. So, so that was awesome. a very spur of the moment, uh, popped up out of nowhere and I'm glad that that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking, you mentioned uh, throughout the whole morning session, I heard it a, a number of times and you just said it here a few moments ago, teach one, reach one. Reach one. one. Mm -hmm. what, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it's whatever you have learned we want to create a vessel for you then to be able to pass that to somebody else. And so even as patients, we want the patients to recognize whatever phase of care they're in, they have gained something from that, and it's their job and responsibility to pass that to someone else so that someone else can benefit because we really believe that everybody really wants to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to buy the Girl Scout cookies, proverbially, or help a veteran. Mm -hmm. But everybody doesn't know how to do that. Mm. Right, and right. when they're given a vessel that allows them to take something that they've learned and help somebody else, they're more willing to be bold. They're more willing to step up and do that for helping somebody else than they would even do it for themselves. Yeah. That's profound. You know, Jen and I were stretching for a long time about how critical it would be to know that TLC is not another practice management group. It is not just another spizzed environment, 
but it, that it is a place that brings everything together. The totality of our philosophy along with the compliance and details to make sure mm -hmm. we're reimbursed properly. Mm -hmm. The totality of protecting marriages along with continuing to be on fire for chiropractic. Mm -hmm. The totality of raising up teams while also elevating the doctor to be their best expression of self. Mm -hmm. You know, we're mm -hmm. tired of going to these environments where it's a insurance seminar or it's oh. a philosophy seminar or it's a collection. Just stop it, just stop it. You know, unless we're really working on all the seven territories or whatever you break it up into in life, we can't really reach our best. So I love that, um, that you, that the IFCO, that moments like this allow all of us to uplift each other. So mm -hmm. these questions you're asking are really important. Reach One, Teach One is that, that I witnessed my son learn something on a phone. And he was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old in the backseat of the car. I asked him for my phone back. He went to give it back and he paused. And in the moment, he went to bring it back to his friend Gabe, who was sitting just like this. And he said, Gabe, and he showed him something on the game about how he solved the problem. And then he gave daddy his phone back. And in that moment, it was almost surreal. It was like in the Matrix when everything slows down. <laughs> and I looked at my son and I said, David didn't want to give me the phone back because he wanted to be something in his friendship that gave his mm -hmm. truth to someone else. Mm -hmm. and, and it just like paused me and I said, that's one of the human miracles, that it's human nature mm -hmm. that Frank Hahn wants to be a good guy. Mm -hmm. Danny Knowles wants to be a good guy. We want to go to bed at night and we were good guys. Mm -hmm. And the women want to be great matriarchs. And when we have something that we think is good, there's a pause that says, can I give this to someone? Mm -hmm. Can I be of use to someone mm -hmm. else? And so Jen and I started talking about this Reach One, Teach One campaign. And in TLC, it's that, it's, TLC was founded because a 12-step program saved my family. And one of the things about a 12-step program is if you work the program, ultimately you need a sponsor. And if you really follow through on the program, one day you are a sponsor. Mm -hmm. My hope for this profession mm -hmm. is that every chiropractor so works the program they have to work mm -hmm. that ultimately while they get served from others, they end up being of service to many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what TLC is about. And that's what makes what you're doing unique. Mm -hmm. So it makes chiropractic unique. Uh, and I like, I, I don't even like, I love going to those type of events. Danny Knowles puts on a, a, yes. a tremendous event, Mile High. He gives back to the profession. Completely. Um, another great one is uh, Scott Garber has a great oh first gosh. year's event. Uh, and he gives mm -hmm. back to the profession. But you guys give back to the profession a great deal too at Sherman College. Completely. So can you share a little bit about what's... Or Before you do that, Danny I want to say right, something. Right. No, I want to say something right. about that, which is that, mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked that question. You, usually, which is, Liam Shul has no problem <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yeah, well, I have a little bit more, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. manner. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but here he's, you know, Jersey there, yes. right? Yes. So, <laughs> so here's the thing. I want to say something about that was supporting Sherman College. I was in the room mm -hmm. when um, you had when Edwin Cordero had just become president mm -hmm. of Sherman, mm -hmm. and we were sitting there in his office, and he had just received from you a gift, mm -hmm. which oh, was man. the um, oh. safety pin huh. on a board, and I yeah. saw the emotion of what that meant to him. So thank you for wow. your support wow. of Sherman College. I didn't and know it that. Was, it was really touching when he when he got that. It meant a lot to him. Wow. So um, we appreciate your help at Sherman College and in telling people, uh, referring people to that school and support of it and support of the administration. And so let's talk about that in the mm -hmm. philosophy and the safety pin cycle and your relationship between those and Sherman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, TLC has had a, just an epic, magnanimous impact upon many corners of the profession. And one of the things I've always said is, yes, I want to be able to talk in the corners of our profession that love our conversation, but I'm not doing my job if I only speak where everybody loves what I'm saying. Oh. Mm -hmm. Until I walk into the chambers where I might be despised and my words scorned, mm -hmm. then I'm not really working. Mm. It's easy for me to show up at a place like the Berkshires and speak of the love of chiropractic. Mm -hmm. But am I willing to walk into the bowels of places that I believe are scouring the viscera that define our profession out of the profession? That's where I belong. Well, for many years, Jen and I were approaching schools after schools after schools to say, what TLC is doing is clean. What TLC is doing, it doesn't sell a product. What TLC is doing doesn't need money reimbursements from the school. What TLC is doing doesn't need to pay a school. 
It's the love of chiropractic carried out in practice that protects marriages. I mean, that's another one. There are way too many groups out there that, that couldn't care less whether your marriages stay together but are growing practices or other things. I want the whole picture looked out for. And I approach school after school, and she knows I spent unimaginable amounts of money and years trying to get a school to embrace what we were doing for the cleanliness that it is. Mm -hmm. And Sherman was the first school mm -hmm. to take the time along with us to slow everything down, to check into every crevice of what TLC was, and to find that every part of the agenda really was clean. And amazing things happened. There was change all over the place at Sherman. And step by step, I mean, clearly God wove his hand over this thing, because this was not going to work any other way. And we ended up supporting the school by saying, look, this is what we have to give. And it protects family, it protects practice, it protects chiropractic. And what do you remember about that passage that was different from all the other places? Well, I think what was most different for me is it, we set out an agenda of what we wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And we put out something that no one else, I don't believe anybody else has, has set out to accomplish, that by working a program from first quarter through graduation, That's true. that students would graduate and within three years be out of all their student loan debt. And so that is our project with Sherman to show that we know that if doctors work this program and are faithful to dig in and have the support of the TLC community, mm -hmm. within three years of graduation, they can obliterate all of their student well, loan debt. I, I got to qualify that. It was six years. But nonetheless, okay. the three years of school that we walked through the program and we went through the mathematics of this, that if you do what we ask you to do mm -hmm. and you surrender yourself to being humble enough to do what you must do, that all students completely obliterating their obligations to federal government could be mm -hmm. cleaned up in six years. And right now, one of the things mm -hmm. that got under our mm -hmm. skin is dignity and honor always precede the arrival of the man or the woman into the room. Mm -hmm. In the lack of it or the presence of it. Mm -hmm. People know what you're about. Yeah. And this profession is a scab on the face of civilization right now regarding student loan debt. And it has to stop. We don't need to talk about all this other stuff if we're not cleaning up our mess. Our mess right now is we are the worst, most defaulted profession in America on student loan debt. And our schools have to stop until they clean that up. And Sherman, along with this uh, Reach One, Teach One initiative, along with the PST Practice Success Program initiative, along with what TLC is just giving to the school, our ambition is the students want to embrace, we hope they are willing to embrace, total obliteration of student loan debt in six years. That's phenomenal. That's we, phenomenal. And, and that's a, phenomenal for the students. We have a couple people chatting in on the chat box. Oh, that's great. Yay. We have uh, someone from around the other side of the world chatting in hey. and asking, will you, uh, Miranda, will Dr. Jen and Dr. Dean please come to Australia? Hey, yeah. we're on. Australia. She's a student out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so uh, maybe you guys Thank can you. set that up. We America. have an exchange student that lived with us from mm -hmm. Perth, Australia. I know that's the other area, but well, mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Well, I'll say something else on that, mm -hmm. which is with the student loan issue. We have the greatest healing art mm -hmm. on the planet mm -hmm. in our hands. Yeah. So if we have the greatest healing art on the planet, being able to make a living out of it mm -hmm. should be something that easy. Right. is right. easy. Right. Easy. Right? Easy. easy. It should be easy. My yoke easy. is easy. My burden is light. It should right. be simple. Yes. And so how do you help that become easy for people when maybe they didn't have the tools when they come meet you in the first place? Mm -hmm. hmm. What is some of the first challenge. things that you help them with? I think the school needs to help them study chiropractic. Well, that'd be great. Imagine that. Falling in love with chiropractic. The schools <laughs> need to be led by leaders. See, we have a challenge, and, and no discredit to someone who didn't feed their family being chiropractors, but if you're leading an institution, a university, and a college in any area, and you've never fed your family, maintained your marriage, paid your kids' tuitions, kept the solidarity of your household hmm. while being in practice for decades, hmm. Maybe if one or two of you are in the high leadership of, of the college, okay. But if most of the college leadership is made up of people who didn't feed their lives in practice, how can you lead a student body 
for whom their primary existence is to live in practice. Yeah. The schools have to clean this up. There has to be some stop. Just stop. There could be one person or two person. You know, I, I think of some people that are incredible administrative geniuses. They've gotten PhDs in college academic administrative skills. And there could be a few of those that really didn't feed their families in practice. But when you look across a president, a vice president, a provost, and all these other people, and the majority of them never live 10, 20, 30 years in practice, and that's leading the college, they start to think things like x-ray, adjusting and other things are like options in a potpourri of a palette of services like acupuncture and all. There's nothing wrong with acupuncture. It's great. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not chiropractic. And a chiropractor would know that. And they'd say, those things are okay. That's secondary. If somebody wants to do that uh, three years in, five years in, they've obliterated their desk. They want to add ancillary complementary services. Great. But a chiropractic college has to raise chiropractic graduates well said. who want to practice chiropractic. Uh, that's kind of a novel idea, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's. <laughs> you've, I've already revealed too much of my story. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's kind of one of the things that happens is that when there is then a lack, okay, and it's a lack in practice or a lack in a school or a lack in a profession, then you start from that lack mm -hmm. trying to reach out to ex scope expansion or ancillary mm -hmm. procedures mm -hmm. as instead of saying that our focus is the greatest healing okay. on the planet. So let's go down right? the road. So <laughs> has anybody learned to adjust? Yeah. We've learned to adjust. Right. Yes. Are there certain adjusting moves that we're challenging to learn? Right. Yes. Are sure. there certain moves that were downright difficult? Sure. Are there certain moves that actually frustrated you? Sure. Well, if I'm six, nine, 12 months into adjusting and I still suck, but I'm a chiropractor in chiropractic school learning to be a chiropractor and I'm just frustrated, do you think if somebody said to me, hey, look, you don't really have to adjust, you could recommend supplementation. Mm -hmm. You could recommend acupuncture. You no, know, chiropractic adjusting, that's an option. If you were given that option and you were depressed or frustrated, might you end up giving in in a weak moment to say, forget the adjusting? People aren't gonna do it just in a weak moment. They're gonna do it because they never had a chiropractic experience. Oh. Because how that's another that thing, is how mm -hmm. common, mm -hmm. how common, I, I think, Mo not enough chiropractors have had a chiropractic experience, either in receiving an adjustment yeah. right. themselves or right. seeing a miracle right. on someone else. In terms That's of, it. and we know that there, this is what really it's what really happens when people get you know further connected from being disconnected. Right. Mm -hmm. um, however, when they haven't had a chiropractic enough chiropractic experience either way, then they don't value that. So. And then something else becomes a replacement. Right. Something else becomes a. Isn't this true with good? anything, good marriages, right. good relationship, right. something else becomes an option because the high road requires more sweat. Right. So, right. so let's go back to that safety pin cycle because that's key in chiropractic and mm -hmm. certainly in TLC. We talk about that. You know, isn't it common that most people in some aspect of their life live disconnected? And wouldn't you agree that mm. the people are just going around whether they're disconnected with their spouse? They're disconnected in their finances, in their physical health. They're living disconnected. And what is chiropractic? The power to connect the body with the heart and the soul and to put that together. And that's what we're doing. That's mm. the conversation of TLC of when people come to us in the beginning, right. and they're like, what do we do? The <laughs> first thing we do is slow the conversation down okay. and really connect them with that possibility so I gotta of share this. living that way. Right. When I do my CE programs around the country, one of the things I ask people to do is I create a paradigm in the room where total vitalistic chiropractic is on this side and I let the room define it and total allopathic chiropractic care is on this side of the room and I let them define what that means. Mm -hmm. And then I ask everybody to get out of the chairs. They're not allowed to talk and they have to stand somewhere. Ultimately, whether I'm in an ACA group, a COXA group, an ICA group, a New Beginnings group, everybody stands somewhere around the middle to the right or somewhere around the middle to the left. But here's the, the interesting question. When I then ask them, look, if 10 years from now you could sprinkle fairy dust on your life and move a little bit one way or the other, I once did a group of manipulation under anesthesia doctors, somewhere around 70 or 80 of them, that you would think have a more allopathic mm -hmm. treatment of disease mm -hmm. approach 
I've done it for people who do uh, submission of, um, of uh, addictions, uh, obesity, smoking, and the, no matter what group I've done, when I ask the 10-year question of if you could change what you, should, you would do, I would never, I have never seen a group do anything but move closer to vitalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in their hearts, in our hearts, if we've chosen this, there's a part of us that wants to be more vitalistic. And the schools are allowing conversations that don't enhance that. Mm. Right. They're not standing their ground. And we have to stand our ground. And what Jen's saying is this living room in TLC invites people to open that story. So I have a guy in Utah, and uh, right now he has a very disease treatment practice. And he's hiring an associate because he's always wanted to have a wellness-based practice, but he's not sure how to do it. So he's gonna build an additional practice attached to his mm -hmm. existing allopathic practice. And while we've been working on this for two and a half years now, little by little, his PVA is going up and his long-term impact on people is changing. Now, if I scorn this guy because he showed up in TLC, doesn't take x-rays, treats diseases, does all this other kind of stuff, who would I have been? Mm -hmm. right. But I loved him. And I welcomed his story, and I judged him not, but I bathed him in truth. And little by little, he's doing what he needs to do. And you know, no credit to me, no discredit to anyone else. He's finding his story, and that's what TLC does. TLC helps people find their story. Mm -hmm. okay. And Talk so I just want to say again, ahead. we are on, we're yeah. live. <laughs> it's very live. We're seeing green we're live with doctors. Jen and Dean DePice, two mm -hmm. of my favorite people on <laughs> www.ifco.tv. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching this, what I would like to do is find a mobile device, whether it be an iPad, an iPhone, some other device, laptop, and share that you're on that to watch IFCO TV from TLC in Princeton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. the, by the way, the weather is great here. Yeah. The weather. Uh, the weather the time great. of year. No, I came from higher altitude so when I got <laughs> off the plane when I got off the plane one of the things that I did notice was that you could feel the air yeah you have lots of air yeah, yeah I like walked into it air compared to what I was used to it in Colorado I was like whoa shocking humidity and air um, but we're in for a great weekend here mm -hmm. um, at TLC community tell us more about this particular weekend and what you're covering mm -hmm. go Jen awesome so this is our annual strategic planning session so we really teach that we have to plan for the growth. We can't just jump into the new year and expect things to be different by living the same way. We have to set out with skills that can equip us and our team of how to grow the practice, how to expand the different components, because we totally believe that every year you should be expanding mm. and growing. And if you're not growing 46% per year, then just stop right there. Like look at your own practice. And if you have not grown four to six percent every year, what happens? Well, just basic inflation is taking two to three percent a year. Yeah. So if you're not growing four to six percent per year, within seven years you're bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Because of a hundred points of money, fifty points go to overhead, fifty points are your paycheck. If for seven years you don't grow at three points a year you've chewed up half of your paycheck, you're trying to live on half the buying power and you're wonder why you're failing in practice. Then you blame your practice to not be sick. And I say this because I watch people and this magically happens between eight and fifteen years in practice. So again, even practice management people, practice management people who never lived in practice, they can't love you and serve you in this story because they all quit in one or two or three years to teach you how to do things, <laughs> right? But you have to live through 20, 30 years in practice to really honor this conundrum. Chiropractors get exhausted between eight to 15 years in practice. And it usually happens because within three to five years, they reach their point. Within the next seven years, they stop growing. That means they've lost half their paycheck by 15 years in practice and the story is depressing. Mm -hmm we have to create greater stories right. so and that's why we're doing this annual strategic planning gotta do it because we know that if we plan by september for what's going to happen in january we have time to mobilize our team with skills that they can implement and that it's personal to them mm -hmm. you know if you guys were listening and observing the, the people in the tlc community the CAs are on fire. They want to do it. They mm. have a heart and they understand that they have a message in chiropractic that they want to get out. And all we need to do is equip them with tools and give them accountability and target numbers and make those accountable ways that we train with them. And they help 
propel the conversations and invite more people into those conversations and we learn to challenge yeah. people to more and it's awesome yeah. that's what you we're know, doing the, the chat box is going crazy they're cheering for you guys Yay. yeah we're and where, where do we have people so joining great. us from where yeah. do we have people joining we us have, from so um, far uh new zealand australia uh gin keller is on uh gin keller's down south in uh, southern u.s okay i think it's mississippi or wow. te no, texas might be texas we have Brian Dooley watching the show. Oh, you know Brian, Brian from oh, Brian. Down South Carolina. He mm -hmm. actually started the Practice Success program oh, right, yeah. that you guys are yeah. helping out yeah. with. Oh. Uh, the, now, if you're a student out there, do you think you can learn? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, share, uh, reach one, teach one, yeah. share that with other students. Yeah. Yeah. Contact the devices and yeah. maybe they can you can get them at your school as well That's right. and, and also for practicing doctors the reach one teach one program is we have a a bank of chiropractors who purchase reach one teach one tickets that completely pay for your participation in one of these two-day events mm -hmm. because the idea is that every chiropractor who already loves this process purchases a ticket for someone else to engage the process I'm sorry. No, no, you don't have to apologize by any means. Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing is that students, I see so often students, and you've probably seen this too, I, I'm sure, that say, well, I'm going to learn that how to run an office stuff or technique stuff or how to communicate stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll learn that after school. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And that is a big mistake, yeah. big mistake, right? When you are in school, mm -hmm. I know you have a lot going on, boards, classes, all of that, go to as many chiropractic programs, quality chiropractic right. programs, not just yeah. anything, right. but quality right. chiropractic programs as you can because it will prepare you for when you get out, yeah. correct? Yeah. Right. And it's really important the quality of the people that you're being mentored by. Right. So pe pick people who embody what it is that's congruent with you. Mm. So now, I, I think um, if I have it correct, uh, the first day of each quarter down at Sherman College, don't you do a, a, like four hours or eight hours or something? Well, how like it works is... 800 um, hours? <laughs> <laughs> we, we fly a minimum of four doctors, sometimes more, who have to all have been in practice at least 10 up to mm -hmm. 20 or 30 years. They have to have their marriages intact. They have to have their household intact. And they come onto campus because we don't want someone teaching other students what to do who are just two years out. That can sound mm -hmm. sexy and exciting but I want students to be taught by someone who's 10, 20, 30 years out so, and, and still in practice living the story. So yes, the first day um, I get to meet with first quarter students. By the second day, the entourage of TLC doctors are on campus. We fly everyone in. We take care of all the sessions. We've been working on this curriculum. I was working on this with Dr. Joe D'Onofrio five to six years ago. Right, right. About two years or so ago, we got the blessings of Dr. Dooley to come in and be another part of helping this whole thing play out. And now we have about five different faculty that function as teachers and are in practice integrated into this along with the four to eight different TLC doctors we fly in every quarter and I mean we are spilling our lives and this. The, the very best thing about it for the students is it doesn't cost them anything extra zero no. zero right yeah so so that's that's a wonderful program that that's was right. implemented there yeah but and I, to I, do I'm that a, for Sherman College and the Sherman yeah. Comet College family it's hats know, off to you like, like Danny Knowles I'm a Sherman graduate as well mm -hmm. and we did not have that when we were in school right no. it would have been very very no. helpful no. if we yeah. had it when I was and, in school and to be clear about the cleanliness mm -hmm. of this there's no percentages there's no memberships there's nothing these are people whose lives are paid for being in practice and because of that they want to give themselves to students because mm -hmm. they understand the importance of their legacy mm -hmm. right That's and, and because they've seen the pain of the people in that 8 to 15 year range yeah. not do yeah. well and maybe go into something other than the greatest healing art on the planet right. Amen. right and so and, and they don't want to see that happen to more people yeah, especially okay. if they're coming out of school we need the world needs more chiropractors yes, right. plain and simple mm -hmm. we need more yes. chiropractors on the planet the world needs us more than ever so for people to graduate and have better tools and access to better That's tools right. like what you, what you provide yeah. and strategies and resources is vital for, right. for folks who are interested uh, what's how can they contact you what's the best way to contact you uh, mm -hmm. call us uh, US number 215 Six five seven one seven zero one, or just visit the website www.tlc the number four super teams plural dot com, and and click into R one T one, or there's uh, www.r1t1.org.
and you'll automatically be shown a directive of how to see some of our conversations, how to order a Reach One Teach One certificate to get to an event, because we have doctors that have pre-purchased tickets for others because of this whole phenomena, based upon the fact that everyone who grows through a program seeks a sponsor in a program and one day wants to sponsor others in a program. Mm -hmm. And this program is about raising up your best from inside out, not telling you from outside in what needs to be done. So I want to hear a couple more wonderful things from our chat box. Yeah. Right, so here's one, one of your clients Aww. who could not make it here this hmm. weekend. Uh, it looks like Doc, Dr. Lynn Erickson. Yay! Yay, hi, Dr. So, Lynn. Uh, so she wrote, or is he, it he? He, he wrote, he. Dr. Lynn wrote, I have been working with Dr. Dean and Dr. Jen for just over four years. My practice, my team, and mm -hmm. myself are better for it. The ASP seminar is one of the best seminars I've ever been to, and my only regret is not being here oh. this weekend. And thank you for providing this in inspiring broadcast. Yeah. Thank uh, you, so, yeah. so he was able to log on. Here's some of your inspiration, mm -hmm. even though he's at home. Right. Uh, and so, so now you've brought him a little mm -hmm. bit more chiropractic into their lives. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's thank, thank you, Lynn, for saying that. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, uh, hmm, Ryan, hey, Danny, way to rep Boulder for oh. us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Ryan Pilger? Or another Ryan? Uh, Ryan Marchman. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say something about people not here. Mm -hmm. Just, just because I'm sure there'll be a recording of this, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that I point this out. Scott Levan. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say, <laughs> Scott. This is the first TLC the event only he's time, not here. And it's the only time I've been here. <laughs> All right. This has got to be right. the only seminar <laughs> he's missed. Wait, Scott, <laughs> no, here's why I say this. I, I don't know. Something. Scott and I go way back. I don't okay. know if you know that. No. 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 Know that. We were in the same class at Sherman. Oh. So okay. we spent three years sitting next to each other. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right, so I got to say something on behalf of Dr. Scott and Dr. Rena. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was a big conversation in order to allow him to have an opportunity to miss a TLC event because he, his heart was so invested and so was Dr. Reyna in being here and amongst the community. It was actually a, a challenge for him to agree to I wouldn't to give miss him the whole pass. So <laughs> just, just to make that statement, it wasn't because he just randomly missed it. We invested in that so he could build that relationship mm. and have that time with his spouse, soon to be together. So I, I thought he why. was because of me. I thought it's he was you, Dan. Oh. 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 <laughs> you think I spent enough time oh, with that guy oh. in school. <laughs> it's great to know that connection. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I reached out to Frank Hahn with one conversation. Uh, I saw what you did at the Berkshire Philosophy event, which thankfully I'll be speaking at next year. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said to Scott Garber, I said, who is that guy? What is he? And, and one phone call to you, and mm -hmm. you completely laid yourself down to volunteer yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know, when great men and women live to volunteer themselves for the mm -hmm. great things that have to be done, then over the top, greater outcomes show up for us. Mm -hmm. so. uh, thank you so much for those kind words. Uh, and I would have done it for you anywhere, but it happens to even be better because it's in my backyard. Amen. I, 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 didn't, <laughs> have okay. I didn't have to fly around the world to, to put up the right. green screen and set this all up. But yeah, so I'm, I'm very thankful that it was right here in New Jersey. Uh, it's not often that we get to go. We, we have a couple more events in New Jersey every once in a while, uh, but it's nice when it's in our own town. Good. How, how do you guys end up in Princeton, by the way? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we practice in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we settled down. She was from Hicksville, Long Island. Mm -hmm. I was from Hoboken, Jersey City area of New Jersey. We met at Life Chiropractic College. We picked Philadelphia, and when we started hunting, we picked Willow Grove. So we practiced there for decades. And uh, when it came time to start doing sessions, for us, it was either Philly or Princeton. Mm -hmm. And so we shop around for what the people enjoy the most. Right. And this is an epic community. I mean, it's Einstein here. lived yeah. here. I mean, yeah, you think of all absolutely. the mines that have lived here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to get to. It's 45 minutes or so from Newark Airport. Mm -hmm. an hour. But uh, it's become a bit of a home for us. It's either here or Philly because it's it's close to the TLC World Headquarters. Right. World wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Great. If, and if you never had a chance to walk around the Princeton area yeah. over by the universities, it's That's gorgeous. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, our kids in high school were on mm -hmm. the crew teams and things. Oh, okay. So we've been around here. It's, it's really, yeah. 
that's an amazing setting. But we also do TL we do three TLC two day events here in Princeton. But then we do we're out in Denver, Omaha, Detroit. Uh, we're around the country, so we'll love to connect with all of you. So at, time flies, yes. right? Yeah. So we're we're getting to that point where we have to start wrapping things up. But let, let's uh, give them a little bit more values. Let, let's share a couple more thoughts. What can you come up with? Well, this is about annual strategic planning seminars. So if I pause and I address what's there, I would ask this. I mean, this is cliche, yet slow down enough to chew on it. Failure to plan is planning to fail. If we say we're hmm. going to get together next year to do something, and we say it, yet we don't register for it, then we haven't really committed to doing it. Mm -hmm. And I know this because TLC doctors say, I'll be there with you, Dr. Dean, in January at the TLC seminar. Mm -hmm. I say, great, are you registered? They say, well, not yet, but I'm coming. I said, then you're not. Mm -hmm. See, when you don't register, you're actually planning how to keep the date open so other things will happen, virtuous things, things with your family, your, your spouse, your kids. It's just gonna happen. So when you plan to show up, the next part is you do. See, the plan is just the word and the thought, but the registering is the action. And the final commodity in life is action, right? It's action that translates things. So I would challenge us, how do you challenge people to the action? Mm. So one thing that we were talking about in the class that I was in before on renewal cycles, and we were talking about asking for referrals. So I asked everybody, you know, what is one thing that you typically do when you're asking for referrals or inviting people to come to a workshop? And a lot of people said, well, we give out flyers. And then we had a conversation, and this is like typical in TLC, we had a conversation of, you know, a flyer could be a vehicle to connect with people, mm -hmm. but it also could be a full sense that it's a connection because I'm handing you this, but I'm not engaging with you. Mm -hmm. And what are you gonna do with that paper? Are you gonna kind of fold it up and throw it in your car? But if we provoke a question based on something that you know about that person because you've taken the moment to really listen to what's important to that person and then ask them a question like, Danny, I know that your family means everything to you. That's why we're doing a Patient Appreciation Day, to allow an opportunity for you to connect with what's most important to you and what we do and see if, if there's a fit. And, and the important thing is appreciating the patient. <laughs> Many times people do it and, and it's like appreciating yeah. the doctor. <laughs> You're, right. Yeah, it, it's supposed to be appreciation the patient. Right. right. Yeah, so, so that, that's so, so that's stay with idea. what you just did with yeah. Danny. So say that again. Go go further down that road. Danny, I know that your family, like, you just yanked that out of the moment. Right. So, you know, if he was a patient or if I was doing this at a screening and I saw him show up with his wife and, and kids and I would say, you know what, rather than approaching him of, do you want to have your posture checked or, you know, look what we, we're doing here or come stop at our booth, I would say, wow, you know what, I get that you're, you're here today because you're with your kids, you're spending the day with your kids mm -hmm. and that must mean a lot to you. Even if I don't know that, I could pick that up by experiencing him, seeing him show up, not a lone guy, I'm with my family. So mm. lead with something that can instantly connect you, and then then you have an opportunity to then connect. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing community service because family's everything to us. That's kind of practice. It's kind of doctors we are. Hmm. So we, we have another uh, question, if you don't mind. Answering. Questions are great. All yeah, right. We love them. So <laughs> we have uh, Dr. Dean or Dr. Jen. What does your practice look like if they were going to do a, like a virtual walk around the practice? And oh, it's open. and then. Uh, adding on top of that question, what would the um, practice look like today if the student was about to open up? Mm. So well, it would be an open those. environment. Mm -hmm. So everything for us is about being able to connect people. So we suggest and we live in practice where there aren't barriers. So we create an environment where the doctor is accountable with the CAs, so the doctor and the CAs can hear and see what's going on. And so people know, I love it, and some people in TLC, they Chromecast what's going on in their office so that people in different parts of the office can see what's going on and experience it. So it's mm -hmm. you know the epitome of an educational environment, very modern, very contemporary, with making sure that they're stimulated, but it's all centered around the sacredness of the adjustment mm -hmm. and the sacredness of that adjustment experience and making sure that people are learning and it's not about spending a lot of time speaking, but it's about creating that ideal environment 
and then having the CAs extend that adjustment experience so that whatever the adjustment takes in terms of delivery, that adjustment experience is extended by the CAs challenging them. Who are you gonna go and tell that you just had the most amazing adjustment? Like I could see there was a difference in you. You know what, go home and tell somebody about that. And then next time they come in, what do they say? Like, were they experiencing more hopefulness in their day? Like, people aren't experiencing that and they're hungry for it. Yeah. I would say the same thing, that it emphasizes community. You know, even in our broken, degenerate, allopathic counterparts in, in medical and treatment disease-centered care, um, you know, you look at diabetes treatment, high blood pressure, uh, treatment, there are many clinics that are becoming open environments where you put 10 and 20 and 30 people together mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. similar ailments and struggles and we find that their conviction to stay the course and their collaborative uplifting of each other guarantees greater results and that's coming from allopathic research outside of chiropractic so it'd be wise for chiropractic to live upon what it was like when BJ did it which was people got adjusted, adjusted in teaching communities and environments mm -hmm. so teaching is the key uh, the Ralph Keeney research from Duke University, le the leading cause of death in the world is not cancer, it's not heart disease, it's not even the slaughterous effects of medicine. Uh, the leading cause of death is poorly made choices. So when you create an adjustatorium, when you create a chiropractic practice that's an OBR, a one big room teaching environment, you create a possibility for a civilization to become more intelligent and therefore conquering the leading cause of death. And well, one thing I get from all of this that mm -hmm. I want to bring back to is, is connection. We've talked so much about mm -hmm. connection, and that was what chiropractic is about. Yeah. It's about yeah. connection, yeah. right, mm -hmm. and, and healing and community. And when you're talking about one big room and teaching, and people want connection. Yeah. They're missing it from their lives so much, more yeah. so now than ever in so many quadrants of their lives, mm -hmm. and they long for community. And there's so much of a concern about privacy or rights of privacy, but people also have rights for community, and they yeah. want more community that's right. in their lives. <coughs> Absolutely. Well said, so right? Right, and that's and that's why that's exploring because they're not getting it elsewhere. So it's right. great to have connection and community here mm -hmm. with the TLC this, family. This has been a, a power pack <laughs> day. It's only halfway through day that's one. Right. Day that's one. Right. Day that's one. Part of day yeah. one. So we got the rest of this evening. That's why we want to leave people hungry right. for more. That's mm -hmm. right. We don't Absolutely. want everybody saturated. We want you to be like, wow, what's next? What's next? Eight o'clock tonight, we'll have one of our heartbeats, a couple of yeah. our heartbeats. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're supposed to be uh, live streaming that on IFCO TV too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, look for that uh, later on. Mm -hmm. What time does that begin? Uh, I think the session you're doing is 7.50 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. 7.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, back on Join IFCO us. TV. Excellent. Awesome. Right here. Don't miss it. Okay, guys, uh, don't go anywhere. The, the Pisces have a whole seminar to run. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple more guests coming on yeah, the show. Uh, so, guys, thank, thank you, you so for much. Joining us. What thank great you value so much you guys provided. Uh, thank you, too. Yep. 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 Glad to have you on. Oh, thank, thank you, you so uh, much. All right, brother. Yep. Yep. Peace. It's okay. All right. And, uh, Bye, everybody. We have